You know him for his movies, of course, but Richard Gere is also a famous and outspoken advocate for human rights in Tibet and elsewhere around the world. He's here in Washington right now supporting the Dalai Lama, a man he's long admired. Today, the spiritual leader, spiritual leader received the Congressional Gold Medal. President Bush handed it to him and said he admires the Dalai Lama and likes him, supports religious freedom as well. That's something President Bush said China would be wise to do itself. Listen. Americans cannot look to the plight of the religiously oppressed and close our eyes or turn away. And that is why I will continue to urge the leaders of China to welcome the Dalai Lama to China. They will find this good man to be a man of peace and reconciliation. We want to talk a little bit more about the nation's highest civilian honor now being given to the Dalai Lama. The actor Richard Gere is here in the Situation Room. Thanks very much for coming in. Thanks, Wolf. It was quite an amazing ceremony today. I don't know if you've ever seen anything like that before, have you? No, this is the first time that I've been to one of these ceremonies, but this is uh, to see bipartisan support and the President of the United States being so, I thought, emotional and reaching down deep inside of themselves and speaking about the Dalai Lama, the way we would want them to speak about ourselves as Americans, as this is this is our highest aspiration. I mean, you, you see, the President of the United States, the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, and all these members and others coming uh, coming together. Elie Wiesel, I mean, this Elie Wiesel like was there. Huge. Uh, why? Why do you? Why, first of all, are you as passionate as you are in trying to support a free Tibet and the Dalai Lama? Well, clearly, this is a, a people who deserve their freedom. And as His Holiness says, he's, he's looking for meaningful autonomy so that their religion and culture can survive. And the onslaught of, of the Han Chinese and the Communist Chinese government and the policies has been destroying them now since 1959. Were you surprised at how effusive, how open the president was today yes. in his public remarks and in the way he actually dealt with the Dalai Lama? Because you know, presidents often meet with the Dalai Lama, but it's usually behind closed doors, no pictures, no nothing. Well, you know, actually the first president to be photographed openly with His Holiness was his father, was the first Bush. And uh, look, this, this president I have a lot of problems with, but in terms of Tibet and HIV AIDS, you know, he's done extraordinary things. And you were, but yeah, but I must say that the, not only the speakers were of one mind and of one heart about supporting the Dalai Lama and his cause, which is a just one, uh, supporting him as a person also. You felt this extraordinary closeness that they all felt for him and a history with him, but also in the audience there. I mean, it was a, such a huge number. I've interviewed Nancy the, Pelosi I've, I've told interviewed later, the she, Dalai Lama in the past, and he is an amazing man, but go ahead, tell us what Nancy Pelosi told you. Well, she said she looked out and she'd never seen so many people at one of those events. I mean, representatives and, and, and senators who were there to, to want to be part of, of this event. It was deeply emotional. What about the Chinese government's reaction? Because uh, they're saying all these things that they're not happy about this, that there will be consequences. What do you think? Well, it's kind of childish. I mean, they're using this kind of old form um, uh, characterizations. He's a splitist. He's he's you know with this, this kind of childish remarks. Because he's not calling for an independent Tibet. He's no, saying he should be part of China, but should have autonomy. The autonomy is meaningful autonomy in terms of religion and culture. Uh, you have to understand this is a vast area we're talking about. Tibet is the size of Western Europe, and it's a very delicate ecological place. Um, the Han Chinese have now, the Chinese government, communist government, has brought in over six million Chinese settlers, many of them subsidized. Uh, and they're... To try to change the demographics. Oh, absolutely. You know, so they've done should, this what, elsewhere what all over US, what is now what, China. What do you want the U.S. government, well, the first, Congress, very, the executive branch, what do you want the U.S. to do? First, what they're doing now, they said in, in harmony with all parts of our government, have said, yes, this cause is just. It's not political, it's human. It's in the area of human rights and civil rights and the will of, of and the need, the desire, the, the, um, the right of all of us to practice religion, to practice our own culture in a way. Uh, the so richness, get, the richness you, of but, China, but, the richness of the world demands uh, that. I'll ask you, how, how do you get the Chinese to change? For example, there's the Beijing Olympic Games yeah. coming up this summer. Yeah. I, where do you stand? Because some are saying that maybe it's time to think about a boycott. Boycott's difficult to me. I don't believe in isolation. I believe in speaking the truth and speaking the truth loudly in every instance. And I must say our State Department and our executive branch has been doing that. Um, I, I think forcing strongly 
and if you'd rather say suggest strongly, the meeting between the Dalai Lama and the leaders of Hu Jintao in China around the Olympics would be great for Hu Jintao, would be great for China. They have huge problems in that country in dealing with the rest of the world. The human rights abuses are well documented. The abuse of their own people and their minorities is well documented. Uh, to create a positive situation with the Dalai Lama, and this is all resolvable. These are not huge issues we're talking about. It's freedom of religion, freedom of development of culture. Richard Gere, thanks for coming into Washington. Thanks for coming into the Situation Room. Thank you. And thanks for all those excellent films as well. Thanks a lot. Any follow-up, by the way, on that kiss in India with the, uh, you remember you, you were going to be arrested if you came back to no, India? I don't the, remember the, a thing the, about the, that. the famous kiss. The famous kiss. She's a beautiful girl, I have to tell you. She certainly is. Uh, Shilpa Shetty. <laughs> Nothing, nothing going on in that front? Do no, you, mean, you want to stay on here for more? I'll give you more stuff. You know, just tell me, Let's go Indian, back to has, Tibet because I'd rather give has, the time has, to has that. The, has the Indian government you know, gotten over that? No, the Indian government has, but the Chinese government now. That's an interesting thing about the Chinese. The Chinese are in this extraordinary state where they are on the edge of achieving their greatness. Now, I think it's incumbent upon us as the superstar on the planet now, the superpower, to say, look, if you want to be the great country that you want to be this is the way you do it it's through dialogue it's through honoring nonviolent demonstrations this is if you want to be in the group with us if you want to be in the security council of the un this is how we behave and i think it's important for us to bring that up in every instance richard gear thanks for coming in thanks a lot I don't got leave you. Don't leave, don't leave you. Don't leave you. Hold on. Ram down. <laughs> the other way. Hold on. <laughs>